Today we're going to talk about the film that helped kill thousands. It's really hard to imagine a film that was developed by the United States military industrial complex and a private company, but alas, here we are. Today we're going to be talking about none other than Kodak Aerochrome. The creation and the development of this film and its eventual uses make it one of the most interesting films in photographic history. Surprisingly, the film's creation can be traced all the way back to the Second World War due to Kodak finally stopping production back in 2010. Getting a roll of it now will likely cost you your firstborn. But taking you all the way back to the beginning, the very first infrared film, period, I don't mean color infrared, I mean infrared, was created by Robert Williams Wood back in 1910. His very first version of the film was very, very slow and acquired extremely long exposures, which made the film not all that useful. It wasn't until the 1930s when more infrared films had been created by other folks and it became more widely available to the public that Kodak finally started developing their own infrared films. By the year 1937, there were over 30 infrared film stocks available to consumers by no less than five different manufacturers. Can you believe that? Five film manufacturers. What a time to be alive. <laughs> But they didn't have the internet, so they can suck it. Be super cool if one of them could come back for just like five minutes and replenish our stock, that'd be great. I digress. It wasn't until the late 30s, early 1940s, that this little thing called the Second World War was going on. And as a result of that conflict, the United States military started to see the benefit of needing perhaps a color infrared film. It was that need that gave birth to Kodak Aerochrome slide reversal film. The main purpose of this film was aerial surveillance and camouflage detection. How this works, infrared ectochrome or Kodak Aerochrome, they're basically the same thing. How this works is the films have three sensitive layers. And no, I know what you're thinking, red, green, blue, absolutely not. In this case, it's an infrared, a near infrared layer, and then red and green. All the layers are sensitive to blue, which then has to be filtered back out. Typically, folks have used a yellow color filter to filter out this blue light, but people have also used orange and red filters as well, which yield different results based on the time of day, lighting, and whatnot. And when this film stock was used, it created really interesting color shifts. And the active ingredient, so to speak, with this film that made it so useful for military applications was the fact that military clothing contained no chlorophyll and it didn't reflect the infrared light in the same way that plants and vegetation do, therefore rendering it true to color, meaning that it wasn't rendered as hot pink. So if you're looking at a big bunch of trees and grass and plants, a person in a military uniform is going to stand out like a sore thumb against that harsh red pink color. Kodak put out the original version of Aerochrome in 1942, Aero Kodachrome Reversal Film Camouflage Detection. So if that gives you any idea what the, <laughs> what the use behind the film was, it says it right in the name, Camouflage Detection. The very first versions of the film proved to be too slow for any practical use, but by 1945 they had developed a much faster version of the film, and it was that version of the film which was quickly deployed to the military front lines. The film actually saw operation on the Pacific Front towards the end of the Second World War. While the film's origin was in the military, after the Second World War was over, the Department of Natural Resources and the National Park Service actually saw a lot of use for the film. These agencies began using the film to remotely gauge the health of foliage, even from space. Somewhere out there, there are old dilapidated satellites with bundles of aerochrome film floating around. But maybe there's some aerochrome up there that's not been used. At some point, somebody will be able to justify retrieving that. And over time, eventually the military utility of the film began to wane as well, as our enemy figured out how we were spotting them and blowing them up, presumably. And the enemy started making special infrared camouflage paint. The US military ended up using Kodak aerochrome to the end of World War II, on into the Korean War, and even into the Vietnam War, and into the Cold War. With photography becoming a more and more popular hobby for folks, eventually Kodak started started selling Aerochrome to the public. It wasn't until fashion and pop photographer Carl Ferris started using the film that it started to achieve widespread usage. It was Ferris's image that eventually popularized the medium and were probably some of the very first color infrared images that most folks had ever seen. The surreal false colors yielded by Kodak Aerochrome really went well with the psychedelic movement that was budding at the time. The film achieved such popularity that artists like Jimi Hendrix and The Grateful Dead would eventually use Aerochrome false color infrared images, Kodak Aerochrome, as album covers. And fun fact, it was one of these Grateful Dead album covers that actually inspired Richard Moose to end up using color infrared film Aerochrome in his projects. Unfortunately, like bell bottoms, shell necklaces, and frosted tips, color infrared film would go out of style. And to make matters worse, those elitist professional photographers would view color infrared film as an amateur's toy. I bet they wish we could have it back now, though. It's really sad and unfortunate, but eventually Kodak discontinued Kodak Aerochrome, like we pointed out at the start of the video, in 2007. And this was mainly due to the rise of digital cameras and the decline of analog photography on the whole. And that brings us to the present day. If one is diligent, you can get on eBay and find a rare 
rare roll of Kodak Air Chrome, or you can find one of the custom cut rolls from Dean Benici floating around on eBay. This was a gentleman who ended up buying big rolls of uncut air chrome film and cutting them up into various formats and selling them on eBay. So you can either find some of Kodak's original air chrome or more likely you'll find some of Dean's hand loaded air chrome film floating around. So either way, you're going to have to have a pretty good amount of cash on hand because of this stuff is very expensive now and only going to become more expensive over time. And if you are lucky enough to find a roll of Kodak air chrome that hasn't been shot, by all means, do tons of research and try to figure out how to properly shoot it at better part of $10 or more per shot. You're going to want to really get the most out of the film. <laughs> there is another way to kind of get there, though. Um, a few years ago, Lomography released Lomochrome Purple. And while Lomochrome Purple isn't really air chrome, it isn't infrared at all, in fact, you can, especially with a little post-processing, get kind of close to the results of Kodak Air Chrome. And when the conditions are just right, it can look pretty similar. So that may be something to look at as well. And if you're just interested in those wild color shifts, Lomochrome Purple can be quite interesting for that. But one way that you can get Air Chrome looking images really easily is you can take a look at the video that I made a few months ago about how to digitally recreate an Air Chrome preset in Lightroom. I'll walk you through step by step how to change each slider and which color profiles to select to give you a very, very similar Air Chrome look. So if you're interested in that, take a look at that video. With film photography coming back, the question is, will Kodak ever bring back Aerochrome? Well, I think at this point, it's probably not very likely. According to a gentleman by the name of Robert Shanebrook, he was the author of The Making of Kodak Film. According to a gentleman named Robert Shanebrook, he's the author of a book, The Making of Kodak Film. He appeared on a podcast relatively recently where he talked about the manufacturing process of Kodak's film. Apparently, in about 2010, Kodak changed up their process, and now all of their films are exposed to infrared light at some point in the process, meaning that any infrared film that was manufactured by Kodak would be fogged from this new lighting. While it would be possible for Kodak to change their lines to accommodate reproduction of air chrome film, um, it would require significant investment and modification of their existing lines. So Mr. Shanebrook thinks it's not really likely that it comes back. So take that for what it's worth. And the podcast where Mr. Shanebrook was on, it was a very informative discussion, was on the Camerosity podcast. That being said, let's not forget how Aerochrome came to exist in the first place, and that was with the help of the United States government. So if Uncle Sam decided to throw enough money at Kodak, certainly they could figure out a way to manufacture the film. Let me know in the comments what you think about Kodak Aerochrome. Would you like to see Kodak bring it back, or do you think, no, it sucks, it's ugly? Either way, let me know. But if after watching this video, you're interested in making your own Aerochrome, as Lord knows we're not interested in paying 100 bucks a roll for it, um, check out my tutorial on how to make air chrome. And if you thought this video was cool or you thought I had an interesting accent, by all means subscribe to my channel. My numbers show that like 95% of you guys haven't subscribed yet. So by all means click that button, it really helps me out a lot. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.